This is DrAlvin.com, the business of wisdom where world leaders and thinkers do come to chat. We're very fortunate to have the international best-selling author, R.T. Kendall. The name of today's book is Totally Forgiving God, When It Seems He Has Betrayed You. First of all, just in case someone is not familiar with what you do, who you are, give us a brief synopsis of your personal testimony. Well, I was brought up in a Christian home. I was converted uh, at the age of six. And you might like to know that was 71 years ago. Um... And then when I was uh, 19 years old, I felt the call into the ministry. And uh, very soon after that, even though I was a student at Trevecca Nazarene College, now university, uh, I was offered to be the pastor of a little church. And I drove uh, every weekend to pastor this church near Chattanooga, a little town called Palmer, Tennessee. So one Monday morning, driving in my car back to Nashville, I had uh, what I would call almost a Damascus Road experience. The glory of the Lord filled the car. Uh, My life was transformed, and it changed my outlook, perspective, theology. And uh, so over the years, I have been shaped by that experience. I've been the pastor of a number of churches, And more recently, I was uh, honored to be made the senior minister of Westminster Chapel in London, England. I was there exactly 25 years, 25 years to the day. Uh, Toward the end of my ministry, I wrote a book called Total Forgiveness. It has become my bestseller into 20 languages. I followed that up with a book called Totally Forgiving Ourselves. For people who say, I know God forgives me, but I just can't forgive myself for this or that incident in their lives. Uh, And God has used that to set a lot of people free. But then I was put with this suggestion by a friend. He said, R.T., I know what your next book should be. I said, tell me. He said, totally forgiving God. And I swallowed. Oh. I wonder what people will think when they see a title like that. But the more I thought about it, I knew this was a needed subject. And so let me make myself clear. God has done nothing wrong. He's pure. He's holy. He's perfect. He is just. But he lets things happen which we don't understand. And when those things happen to us that don't make sense, We must set him free, let him off the hook, and it comes down to forgiving him and to know one day he will clear his name. But until then, uh, we clear his name and say, Lord, it's okay. Don't understand it, but that you did it, it's okay. And so that's kind of the gist of the book. And uh, I've written now almost, well, almost 60 books, but this could be the best. And uh, how, how am I doing? You, do, you, you want do, me to give my testimony? Have no, no. I gone too, on, no, too no, long? No, no, that's fine. But let me ask you something. Just between me and you. We're sitting here. Okay. You know, uh, you got uh, some iced tea. I'm sitting here with my lemonade. We're just talking, okay? All right. Now, when a person tells me. Are we on the air? Yeah, we're on the air. We're on the air. Okay. We're, we're just, we just, you know, just. You like drink we, lemonade on the air. Yeah, we're just talking. You know, we just, we just sure. visualize. You know, we're just sitting talking. Now, if someone came to me and said, I'm mad at God. For me, that would let me know they must not know God because if they really know knew God, they wouldn't ask that question. Now, now, let me me, 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 me another statement. Then I'll let you talk. Now, I haven't been in the way as long as you have, but I've been in the way for forty years. June the eighth, nineteen seventy-two, at eight ten p.m. Because you know, when when God comes in your life, I don't know how people cannot know it. So I know it, and I've been in this thing for forty years. And one thing I've discovered is that if you have an intimate, personal, one-on relationship with God, that kind of question, there's no way in the world I would even ask God that kind of question because I know the nature of God. So when a person is upset with God, just between me and you, doesn't that indicate they really don't have a one-on-one relationship with a true and living God? Well, I would. I want to be charitable. There are people that don't have the background you and I have, and I want not to dismiss people like that. I would say they don't have a very deep relationship with God. 
I wouldn't say they don't know him at all. I think that would be a bit unfair. But I understand what you're saying. But, uh, you know, some people grow faster than others, and some with deep hurts. Uh, and if we went through what some have gone through, we may also be tempted to say uh, that you're mad at God. Uh, even, you know, Jeremiah said, Lord, you, you have deceived me. And I think he was a bit annoyed at the time. Do mm -hmm. I make sense to you? Sure, but I'm just saying is, you know, I think, unfortunately, you know, you're a man who has a relationship with God. It seems like what goes on nowadays, people have a relationship with a particular church, denomination, a faith, a man, a woman, opposed to an intimate personal relationship with God. And I think when we have created scenarios where people give not God their heart, but they give a man or woman their hand, these kinds of questions, whether it's forgiveness and some other things, seem to creep in because we're not necessarily talking a deep relationship. You know, I know who my mother and father is. I know their nature. I know what they will not. I'm just, again, I, I know, I understand the concept, but I'm just having problems sometimes because it seems like we're creating a generation of people, believers, who really are not knowing God. They know more about the de denomination than they do a personal relationship with God. Does that make no, any kind of sense? I know exactly what you mean, and I see exactly what you're saying now. Uh, I would only say that some people are more spiritual than others, some catch on more quickly than others. Some grow faster than others. And um, I think when we get to heaven, well, Martin Luther said, when I get to heaven, I expect three surprises. One, there will be people there that I didn't think would be there. Two, there will be people missing that I thought would be there. But three, the big surprise, that I'm there myself. <laughs> it's by the grace of God that any of us are saved. Well, let's look at some of the important chapters in your important book, Totally Forgiving God, When It Seems He Has Betrayed You. You talk about uh, letting go, letting God off the hook. Help me with part number four. Give me some of the uh, truths that you outlined in part number four. Um, well, th the thing is, you must never question his integrity. Uh, never question his justice, tempting though that is. Uh, but the truth is that we've all gone through situations where we don't understand. And, uh, and so I don't want to give the impression at any time, ever, that God has done anything wrong, because the truth is uh, he's perfect in every way. And I would never want to uh, let people feel that they have a right to be angry. Uh, you forgive God, first of all, uh, by telling him what you feel, and you don't tell the world. Uh, I draw an analogy between uh, total forgiveness when we, we show we have totally forgiven others that have hurt us when we don't tell what they did. We only tell the Lord. And so, too, when it comes to totally forgiving God. Don't utter your complaints to the world. Just say to God, I don't understand this, because he can cope with that. Now, the question is, you, you tell him how you feel. He can cope with that. Psalm 142, uh, pour your complaint out to the Lord. The next thing is to tell God that you love him. Uh, you do this. Perfect love casts out fear. But this is not a feigned love. But it's, it's a true act of the will. You can tell him how, he, how you feel but at the same time express your gratitude to him. Then you set God free by overcoming self-pity. Now, self-pity gets us nowhere. Uh, we've all experienced this when we feel sorry for ourselves, but uh, the truth is it gets us nowhere, and you need to avoid this like the plague, uh, self-pity and a feeling of entitlement. And then the next thing I would say Affirm God's greater purpose uh, by saying to him, I know, Lord, you have a purpose in what you have allowed. I don't understand it, but I choose to believe that you have a purpose. And I can say to anybody listening, it's only a matter of time that you will see that what God has permitted in your life, he did because there was a purpose in it. It wasn't for nothing. 
and one day you will understand. And uh, I quote the poem, Broken Wings Take Time to Mend. And uh, God is patient with us, and we in turn must understand that he has a purpose in all that he's done. And then I would say, totally forgiving God is something you're going to have to do as long as you live. Uh, Never think that just because you do it once, it's over with, it's dealt with. The truth is, uh, as I teach, that total forgiveness is something you've got to keep doing as long as you live. So in the same way, uh, we will always have things that we don't understand. Say, Lord, why did you let this happen to me? Uh, Why, when I needed you the most, or why, when I was trying to get so close to you, uh, and I was praying more than ever, reading my Bible, going to church, and then I lose my job, or I have this financial reverse, or my best friend betrayed me. God, you could have stopped that. It looks like you don't love me. Uh, The truth is, this is why we have to set him free and let him off the hook. And, and we have to do this as long as we live. And then another big thing is think of the good things that have happened to you. Count your blessings. Instead of being negative, uh, say, Lord, you've been so good to me. And start making a list. Uh, make a list of the things uh, that he's done for you. And you'll be amazed how much you have to be thankful for. Well, fight self-pity and a feeling of entitlement. Choose Choose to believe that God has a purpose in what he's permitted. And then I would say the last thing, be patient and willing to wait for things to become become clear to you. You may not understand it by tomorrow afternoon, uh, but be patient. The day will come that things come together and you will be so glad you waited. And God will show up. Uh, it's my experience. He's never too late. He's never too early. He's always just on time. And when he shows up, you will be glad that you put uh, complaining to one side and self-pity and a feeling of entitlement. And you can say with Isaiah the prophet, Lord, we waited for you. It was worth waiting for. Well, how to get the book, uh, you can go to my website, rtkendallministries.com. Uh, you can go to amazon.com. Uh, I, I would like to think you can go in, into any bookstore and ask for the book, Totally Forgiving God. If they don't have it, look horrified as if you're going to have a heart attack, and maybe they'll feel sorry for you and get you the book. But it shouldn't be too hard to get. We can always... Uh, Google me and get my address or go to my website, website, com, and we'll send you a book at once. Well, thank you so very much, sir, for allowing us to be a part of your world. Rick Warren says no one is better suited to address this deep hurt. We're talking about totally forgiving God when it seems he has betrayed you. This will be featured at dralvin.com, the business of wisdom. I have a wonderful pleasure to talk to world leaders and thinkers like RT. This also will be featured on my Facebook page at dralvin.com. And RT, you continue to have a remarkable and amazing day, sir. Well, you've been great to have me. You honor me, and I, and uh, you've had me on before, and I enjoyed your company, and, and you've done it again. Well, thank you so very much, sir, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.